Yo, yo, what's going on, YouTube? Uh, yeah, I'm re-recording this video because I was editing the video and I realized that I forgot to mute the console app. So I was doubling audio uh, within Pro Tools, which I couldn't hear live while I was making the video. So anyways, hopefully now I will get through this video a lot quicker. Um, I do want to try to make this video quick. Basically, today's video is about how I mix rap vocals. Um, I'm using a song today by an artist, DCB. This is his most recent single that came out last uh, Friday, the 27th. Um, we recorded and mixed over the summer. Um, he spent, what was it, like six weeks in the studio? And from scratch, produced, wrote, recorded, mixed, uh, everything within a little over a month. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I'll make sure to link his uh, stuff in the bio. So yeah, today's video is basically going to be me breaking down the plugins that I used. I'll give a little background on how I recorded his vocals, just for some context. For the entire album, I used a Manly Cardioid microphone. I used a Neve 1073 preamp, and I used a distressor. The Neve had no EQ, no, not really any saturation, meaning like the actual gain uh, was pretty minimal. I think it was at like 35 to 40. I feel like that's a sweet spot if you're not looking for any sort of coloration from the Neve, at least not a lot of it. Um, and then, you know, I compensated gain with the actual output trim. The one I was using had an output trim. Um, and then distressor was in opto mode and I used the second distortion thing, algorithm or whatever that is uh, on the unit itself. I feel like that one I like the best for some reason. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the background for how I recorded it. So First things first, let me do this. It's just going to be the, I'm just going to show the first verse, the chorus and verses. I usually process them a little bit differently. Um, but like I said, for today's purposes, I'm just going to, we're going to go through verse one. So here's without any processing. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom but I'm missing my niece so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCB trying to feed my people. If I don't excel then I'm never gonna sell but you never can tell so I stay in my fetal. So yeah, besides a little bit of delay and a little bit of doubling and reverb, um, that's pretty much dry as far as processing goes. That What you're hearing is just the distressor, the Neve and the manly you know just real quick the first thing i do because i think it's important to mention this is that i do go through and i clip gain um this is a pretty broad clip gain meaning usually i'll get, go in and do actual volume automation with the clip gain just depending on how much the proximity effect uh is an issue in the recordings um but yeah like i said this is pretty broad so it seems like i was going maybe by sentences or maybe there wasn't a lot going on because I do like to compress a little heavy handed on the way in just because I want it to sound as, you know, close to finished as possible um, as much as I can, but still leaving me room to process uh, post. So, and I also just like to get a little bit of flavor out of the analog gear if I have access to it. So anyways, first thing I do, yeah, I go through and clip gain. Looks like I didn't do it on this track, but usually I would manually DS as well. But maybe it was a time thing, I don't know, or I was just moving quickly and just trying to get the mix done. Um, but my first plugin is the SSL 9000J by Plugin Alliance. Uh, I am utilizing the EQ, the filters, and the compressor taking out a little bit of 300 usually in most instruments vocals that is a you know muddy area I wouldn't take out a whole lot because I do think that there is a lot of character within that frequency range so you know I would be uh, a little less heavy-handed 
when removing that area. But as far as like wrap and pop stuff goes, most of the time you want to take that out in my opinion, just to, that's just usually what most modern records do. And they sound like, um, and then on the low mids, taking out a little bit of 600 probably. Yeah. So 611, a little bit broader band on that EQ, um, on that little EQ band. Um, and then high mid taking out probably like 2k. Yeah. 2.5. Uh, usually that's another problem frequency, especially with singers. Um, but I think with DCV, he has a little bit higher voice. So usually I feel like just taking out a little bit helps and goes a long way. And then the top end probably end up adding like a DB. Yeah. So 0.5, uh, 22 K. I really like the way this high end sounds. That doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, sometimes you just need a little push. Especially when I'm tracking, this could have been a this could be like a setting from when I was tracking because I do track through these plugins at least uh, the SSL at the very least, um, and then filtering at probably eighty. Yep, so eighty. Um, every now and then I will mess around with taking out some top end, um, but I feel like I've been getting better at recording and mic selection, so I haven't been doing that as much. But that is a good way to get a more focused vocal is actually taking out high end. Um, you know, I would experiment with that. And then dynamics, uh, four to one, a little bit slower on the release. Just like I like it to kind of hold the vocal, especially when it's rap, just because it's more of a consistent signal. Um, fast attack. I do like how SSLs grab transients, especially, yeah, especially like an SSL because it's very just does it in a more nicer way. I don't know what it is. It's like any of the SSL stuff. doesn't matter which channel it is. Um, for whatever reason, the fast attack setting just sounds really good. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. The mix is the same. High pass filter I don't mess with. Um, you know, another key thing is that I do EQ before I compress. Um, that's with anything. Just the way I like the sound. Um, so yeah, so again, here's without the SSL and I'll play it with the music actually. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom, but I'm missing my knees. So I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCP trying to feed my people. Found Excel that I'm never going to sell, but you never can tell. So I stay in my fetal. Thief is a comparison I'm wearing. So you can hear that it really opens up. The vocals. I mean, it sounds fine, but it doesn't sound like, doesn't sound polished yet. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city because I love my freedom, but I'm missing my knees, so I'm checking my ego. Blow way up. So yeah, I mean, even without adding any real high end, just taking out some of those lows and taming some of the mids and stuff really can, uh, you know, uh, make the high end stand out a little bit more. You're just giving more room for that top end and the vocal to sit. So that's why sometimes it's good to cut. It's sometimes it's good to cut before you boost, um, because I think it's important to understand and know um, that by cutting out the frequencies that you don't like, because you want the frequencies that you do like to stand out. I think understanding that is important um, instead of just reaching for a EQ that you do like and you want to boost it maybe take out the frequencies that you don't like first and control the frequencies that you don't like first um, before you add EQ because it can go a long way and it sounds a little bit more natural to me too um, also you know you can hear that there is a little bit of loss and gain which it looks like I made up for it with the fader because obviously naturally when you're EQing you are going to lose some level because you know in EQ you are boosting or amplifying a frequency range is what you're doing so naturally you will lose uh some gain so but me knowing that um i know that later on in the chain i will compensate for the gain as i go and process these vocals so that's the first one next one is a de just um just like the way this one sounds it's either this one or the avid native compress or de -esser. um I think that one sounds really good too. I'm pretty sure 
I can be wrong. I mean, a lot of, there are a lot of newer DSers that are doing their own thing, but it seems like for the most part, a lot of DSers are just basing off of this 902 uh, unit. But, you know, nothing fancy here. I do like to DS just a tad bit more um, just because I know in the long run, eventually at some point in my chain, I will add some top end to the vocal, which will hopefully bring back the sibilance in the vocals, but in a much nicer way because I was able to tame them earlier on in the mixing process, if that makes sense. So here's without the DSer. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom, but I'm missing my niece, so I'm checking my ego. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom, but I'm missing my niece, so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCP trying to feed my people. So yeah, you know, just going in and really like, I would say it's definitely on the edge of too much DSing, but like I said, knowing what I will eventually do to the vocal down the line, I will be able to bring back those S's, hopefully in a much nicer way with a much nicer and more pleasing sounding EQ for saturation. Um, and then the next one, this one I used a lot on this project. I, I think I had bought it right before it. I started recording the project or right in the middle. And yeah, I switched it out for the LA-2A. I usually like the LA-2A Silver. If you've seen my other videos, you know how much I love that plugin and that compressor. Um, but this one is very special too. I think I'd said that the Tube Tech and by Soft Tube, which also you can purchase through UAD as well, um, that one and the LA-2A Silver, I think are one of the best vocal plugin compressors or just one of the best um, plug-in compressors you can get that sound to my ear like real hardware and do what I'm looking for in real hardware. And I think this is another one that does a really, really good job. I was super excited about this one. I was waiting on this one to go on sale forever. I know it's been on sale throughout the years, but I think this last time that it went on sale, and I also had a couponer, so I literally got it for like dirt cheap. But yeah, this is another one of those plugins that if it goes on sale, get it. If you have access to a real one or, you know, have the funds to buy a real one or even a, a replica, um, I would definitely get it. So this is like, I'm pretty sure it's based off of, or not based off, it was an early iteration of what the 1176 became to be. This is the, U, the UA-176, which I believe is also a tube compressor, and the 1176 was a solid state. I could be wrong. I'm sure somebody will correct me. Um, but like I said, this one sounds really good. It's very tuby. I hate using this term, but it's very warm. It's creamy. Like it just sounds really good. So here's without it. Let me, I'm gonna do it this way. So here's without the compressor. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom, but I'm missing my niece. So I'm checking my ego. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom, but I'm missing my niece, so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCP trying to feed my people. Found Excel that I'm never gonna sell, but you never can tell, so I stay in my fetal. So you can really hear that obviously I'm compensating for the gain that I had lost uh, previously with the SSL. So knowing that, like I said, that I would be able to get some gain back when I start adding more processing stuff, plugins or whatever um, down the chain. But you can also hear that the vocal got a lot more thicker in the low end and the vocals came back up. But I think that the way this is compressing the vocals, it brings it up in a much more nicer and a much more natural way uh, than just adding EQ or just not EQing that frequency range in general and just letting it be. I think this does a very good job of really bringing those frequencies while also taming and clamping onto the vocal um, in a much nicer way than a lot of compressors do. But yeah, there's just something about this compressor that sounds really cool. So yeah, four to one, um, tack and release. I think this is default. Uh, I could be wrong, sorry, tack and release. Um, and then mix. I keep that to 100. Um, 
I never messed with this. I knew what this was at some point. I can't remember. Um, and I do mess with the balance a little bit because I do want this plugin to receive the proper amount of signal just so it can do its thing. So yeah, that's that. And then my next one is an EQ I'm using the Kirchhoff by Plugin Alliance again, or I forgot the real company's name or the actual company who ha uh, has this. I think Plugin Alliance just picked them up. But yeah, Kirchhoff EQ can tell you that I know for a fact I am doing static EQ and I'm also doing some dynamic EQ and I'm doing a DS. I have made a custom DS band with this. I think dynamic EQ sounds a lot more natural, especially now that I'm use, utilizing it a lot more. I think specifically this EQ sounds really fucking good and it sounds really clean and it does all that shit in a much more nicer way. I can tell you for sure that I'm still going through and taming these low mid areas, a little bit of the mid range I'm removing and taming because also knowing that my end goal is to hopefully bring back this mid range, whether it's in the vocals or the overall mix in a much nicer way with a much nicer plugin or plugins that I think uh, will bring back the mid range in a much nicer way. If that makes sense. Um, and then, like I said, doing a single band deesser that I made, and I'll show you how this sounds. Here's without it. Can nobody do it like me though? Life on easy when I'm with my ease. Brand new city, cause I love my freedom, but I'm missing my niece, so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCP trying to feed my people. Found Excel that I'm never gonna sell, but you never can tell, so I stay in my feet. Now, obviously, that was like really dramatic. First of all, losing gain again, which, like I said, makes sense. But it's also, if you hear, it's taming those. There's a couple of words that still pop out while he's performing that I'm looking to tame with the dynamic EQ. And then, like I said, I'm taming the mid-range, will, which will also audibly, lo you'll lose gain. And, you know, when you're losing gain, it also sounds like it got a lot smaller. But like I said, me knowing that eventually I will bring back the thickness in the vocal and the mid-range with other plugins as I continue to mix. And you can also see that single band DS thing that I made, um, which I'll show you. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city. So yeah, that's what I'm taming. Sell that I'm never gonna sell, but you never can tell, so I stay in my fetal. And then I'll show you what I'm taming. I'm wearing when I'm staring at myself, stand there for myself and now. Hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself when I, when Honky, I think the I honkiness. Myself, I reflect on the days I need no help. Mid range. I'm a little blind, but I still had a better myself. Just and then that upper mid range. Shit. Usually these two stand out a lot in AirPods. Um, I am checking on AirPods a lot because I know a lot of people listen to those um, and consume music from those a lot. So I'm always making sure that it sounds as good as I can get it without sacrificing quality um, with mixing. Cause I'm not trying to truly 100% mix for AirPods, but I'm, I also do want it to be a very good experience uh, for people who do exclusively listen to AirPods, which I do, whether I'm on the train or at the gym or whatever, um, I'm always making sure that it sounds good. Um, and then, like I said, these, these bands down here, just taming a little bit more low end uh in the vocal like i said it's like it's a little bit of static you can see a couple db throughout the thing but i'm also doing some dynamic eq because i also want to work with the proximity effect and work with the performance if that makes sense i just want it to sound a little bit more musical um but yeah and then just as far as this ds band goes um just try to make it quick like a deesser very fast attack you know, pretty quick release still, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that that stage of EQing, and then behold the beauty, the two tech. I've made a few videos on this plugin already, so I'm not gonna go too in depth with it. But like I've said before, I like to use this as a tone box. I really like the tubiness that this brings. Like I said, this is one of the three plugins that I think sounds like the actual hardware, in my opinion. Um, and it just does a good job. So here's without it. 
Can't nobody do it like me, though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city, cause I love my freedom. But I'm missing my knees, so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCB trying to feed my people. Found Excel that I'm never gonna sell. But you never can tell, so I stay in my fetal. Thief is the comparison I'm wearing when I'm staring at myself. Set a standard for myself, and I hate to get ahead of myself. But I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit my... So you can hear that it to my ear. Um this again made the vocal thicker again it's obviously adding some gain compensating for the gain that i lost with the eq i'm sure like i said i was mixing quickly so naturally this is just the stage that i decided that um to add gain so i use this to add gain pretty much so yeah that's pretty much it. Um, usually the attack and release is these settings, whatever this is for. It's either four or five for whatever reason. Those usually work 80% of the time, and I just leave it at that. I have a preset. You can see it's called vocal start. Looks like I tweaked it a little bit, probably because of this output knob and the threshold. Four to one ratio, like always. Um, but yeah, another good plugin to get if you don't have it already. And then this vocal is now dropping down or being sent to this vocal bus. Um, obviously I could have done this processing on here, but like I said, I was probably just moving quickly. Um, but if I had a bunch of punch-ins, which is usually pretty common with rap, um, I would also I would want all those tracks to funnel into some sort of bus where I can process everything the same. So that's why this is set up this way. But like I said, probably could have just put these three plugins down here. Another reason I don't do that real quick is just because if I need to automate stuff, like meaning I want to do volume automation. Um, if I do it here, then these, this, whatever is being done here will push into these plugins harder, which is not something that I'm looking for. Um, so, you know, I'll do a lot of the volume automation on the actual bus, which is this line right here. My next plugin um, is this little radiator by Sound Toys. This is more of in you know, just so you can get in my headspace and what my thoughts is going into this is I like to treat this plugin or this stage of the processing as like if I was hitting a console and this really brings what I'm looking for in a really nice way, which is mid range. Cause like I said earlier in the mixing stage of these vocals, um, I know at some point I will want to bring back the mid range in a much nicer way. And I know plugins that do it in a much nicer way. And this is that plugin that I think does it in a really good way. This is a custom preset that I made, which is called at 5% because the heat is cranked all the way up. So my mix is at 5%. Um, and this is what it sounds like without it. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom but I'm missing my knees so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCB trying to feed my people. Found Excel that I'm never gonna sell but you never can tell so I stay in my feet. So another stage of gain, another stage of mid-range and as you can also hear that it's a little bit more in your face now and it's cutting through the mix a little bit more. Um, it's like, it's like one of those things where you don't realize you need it until it's gone. And that's what I like about uh, this plugin. And that's usually what I'm trying to go for when I'm mixing stuff. I'm just like, do I actually miss this plugin or am I just doing it just to do it? That's like the number one question I always ask um, when I'm doing certain stuff or trying out new plugins or whatever the case is. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is a really good plugin. Um, I still haven't upgraded to the big one. Eventually I will. I've had this since college or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is good for vocals for mid range. It's good for bass, good for 808s. I mean, it's even, I know people that even use it on their mix bus. I used to use it on my mix bus at one point. Um, a really good, handy, easy plugin to use that has a lot of juice for two knobs. Um, then my next one is the PSP Twin Limiter. Um, my goal for this plugin in this stage of the mixing process for vocals is not necessarily, it's not necessarily there to clamp on anything or compress anything or literally limit anything. It's just there as a safety. If there are any peaks during the performance that creep through the compression and all the processing that I'm doing before, um, 
anything that's creeping out or pushing out, this will catch it and put a stop to it. Um, just so the performance is just a little bit more even, but like I said, not sucking the dynamics out of it. So you probably won't see the needle move at all or very little, if any, like I said, at all, because like I said, it's just there to catch those peaks and put a stop to them and not really there to limit anything as far as like the overall performance. So I'll just play it with it because I don't really think it's going to be a lot of processing. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city because I love my freedom, but I'm missing my niece, so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCP trying to feed my people. Found Excel that I'm never going to sell, but you never can tell, so I stay in my fetal. Thief is the comparison I'm wearing when I'm staring at myself. Set a standard for myself and I hate to get ahead of myself, but I'm chasing myself just to better myself. When I, when I speak, I edit myself. I reflect on the days I need no help. Became a little blind, but I still had a bet on myself. Just me. Still alive. So yeah, nothing at all. And I'm sure maybe in this, because it does look like I tweaked the settings a little bit as far as like the ceiling goes. Um, and, you know, also compensating for a little bit of gain on the output. Um, maybe in the second verse, because the first verse and the second verse are on the same track. Um, maybe there's some stuff going on in that verse uh, that was poking out to me. So maybe this is more geared towards the second verse and not this verse. But it is still there just in case. But like I said, it seems like the overall uh, vocal is pretty tamed. Um, but yeah, that's that PSP twin limiter, another great plugin and another custom, uh, another custom preset, another custom preset that I made. And then the last one is this specter by waves factory. Um, if you don't know what this is real quick, it's all it is, is a EQ that uses saturation, meaning as you're boosting frequencies, it is just saturating those frequencies. Um, so you can't cut with this plugin. It's not meant for EQ necessarily as far as cutting goes. It's just, in my opinion, I think, you know, it's just meant to make or reshape uh, signals, in this case, the vocals or whatever you want to run this thing through. But I really like what this does for vocals. Like I said, I do use it to reshape um, the performance a little bit, or I use it to reshape the um, vocals. And in this case, um, adding a little bit of 5K, 1 dB, and I'm using the tube setting. You have different settings right here. I think tube and clean sound the best to me. Um, every now and then I'll use this uh, rectify, right? Yeah, rectify in the diode. And then on the low end, it is recommended by the company, but for low end, for sure, I'll use the tape. But for the most part, I'm using the clean in the tube. Clean is always going to be on the top end, which I'm doing 3 dB at 12K and up, just kind of like a gradual little shelf. Um, But yeah, so this one's going to be subtle, but it's just enough. It's really just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like, the end of the phrases that you'll hear it the most, if that makes sense, or the end of words. So here's without it. Can't nobody do it like me though. Life on easy when I'm with my easel. Brand new city cause I love my freedom, but I'm missing my niece, so I'm checking my ego. Blowing way up was the path I see for. Young DCB trying to feed my... I mean, if you're listening on good speakers or good headphones, you'll definitely hear that. Um, it's just really sparkly. That's the only way I can explain it. Um, but if you don't have this plugin, definitely a must have, especially if you're doing stuff at home or you don't have, um, you know, you don't have a C800 if you don't have something like that. Uh, this is a good plugin to have to try to recreate, uh, certain things you like or hear about other microphones that you could probably mimic or get away with. I've had to reshape, um, some mixes that I've gotten just using this and it makes, you can, I mean, you can make people sound like they recorded on a much nicer microphone, assuming that everything's recorded right or whatever. This is a really powerful tool. Um, highly recommend to get it. And it's very affordable too. I think it's like a hundred bucks. 
but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I do. I mean, you know, this is usually my overall vocal chain, but for any genre for the most part. But like I said, this was specifically a rap song. Um, but yeah, I mean, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, shout out to everybody that's been watching my videos. They've been kind of going crazy. Um, I'm almost at 500 subscribers. I'm slowly getting there. I think I need like 120 more or some shit. Um, but the goal is to try to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. So there's a lot of you that watch my videos that aren't subscribed. I promise the content will get better. Uh, you know, I just need the subscribers or whatever. So yeah, just fucking keep watching, subscribe. Hopefully this helps somebody, um, you know, let me know what I could have done better or whatever. Like I said, I'm just trying to get better at these videos and stuff or let me know if there's anything like in depth I can talk about on these specific topics or specific plugins. Um, I will definitely do a video on it if it makes sense. So yeah, peace.